to conflict resolution and to increasing prosperity for its people. And the people of Bhutan, I think they deserve the best broadcasting that the country can afford. Now, this doesn't mean all that's offered in India or Europe or the USA in the way of 24-7 news and endless specialist channels. Because, in fact, the reality is that TV is very expensive. Um, there's not all that much money here to support a lot of local TV channels. It's to do with the size of the financial base. Now, the USA can afford channels devoted to health, to pets, to business, or finance. Um, but I don't think Bhutan wants to go down that particular route. Um, you know, you can, you can have some absolutely ridiculous channels, and uh, the shopping channels with lots of cheap jewelry and so on, I think are um, not particularly socially helpful. Um, and I think the future for broadcasting in Bhutan has a sort of comparability, or it could have, with your policy on tourism. That you've gone very wisely in tourism for quality, not for volume. And um, the whole world of shopping channels, quiz shows for big rewards, endless celebrity chat, I don't think that's for Bhutan. You've already got so much of your broadcasting policy right, mm -hmm. and in the years ahead, I think it has to focus on defending, preserving, and developing the essentials, and on avoiding the worst excesses of consumer TV. So, if I can give you just my brief view of what these basic principles should be, um, I think that it's important that you should be reinforcing your commitment to the principles of full public service broadcasting, and as we've already heard, enshrining these in legislation. This is to put a defensive wall around the broadcasting in Bhutan, because the government may not already forever be as enlightened as it is now, you know, things do change. And nothing stays the same forever, and the time is act to act is now, while opinion is favorable. And then I think um, stable funding for BBS is very important, say for three years, so that efficient plans can be made for a lean and well-planned organization, able to operate strategically. It's very difficult to do that if you're on a one-year funding basis. And then I think you need to encourage good governance within BBS by um, releasing any remaining detailed financial control and at the same time demanding full accountability, full publication of all accounts and all these things, and that it meets targets agreed with the government. The government's role, I think, is to give BBS targets, say we want so many hours a week of uh, news or children's programming or whatever they want, and then it's up to um, BBS as just part of the bargain to deliver that um, contract. And then I think you need to continue your good focus on reaching the majority of the population, particularly in the rural areas. And as you already know and understand very well, this for many years is likely to be primarily by radio in some of the rural areas. So. It's important that radio gets its fair share of uh, resources within BBS and it isn't considered a poor relation. And then you have to aim to, for BBS to help the population into the knowledge economy. <coughs> when the knowledge economy is encouraged and driven by the national broadcaster, it reaches into every household and you can help people into the world of websites and all the other modern social media and it's being done by a benevolent organization, not one that is doing it simply to make every possible uh, amount of money out of the operation that they can. And then it's important to nurture and support, a, as you're already doing, a varied and vibrant commercial sector. I think it's important that in Bhutan this shouldn't be too large, or there won't be enough money around to support quality broadcasting within the commercial sector. And as we've seen, you have a good and rational basis for choosing the licensees on the basis of competence, financial strength, formats, and so on. Uh, one thing I didn't notice there was, but I was probably in mind as well, is that the new licensees should set out to serve 
different sectors, so that you're not just producing more of the same kind of commercial broadcasting, but you have one station that you license which is for rural people primarily, or another one which is for the elderly or the young or whatever, and you did deliberately offer different kinds of radio and TV so that it's not just all the same. And uh, then there's a case for it requiring, in fact, a certain amount of public service content from each commercial broadcaster. It can be a condition of the license. And this has been done very successfully in the UK. Uh, uh, it's fading now, but the commercial companies in the UK have been in the past required to do a certain amount of um, public service broadcasting. And um, Bhutan could also consider another method, which is to <coughs> give funds for such PBS activities, which can be bid for by any broadcaster, commercial or public service. This has been tried in both New Zealand, through New Zealand On Air, and through Singapore, through the Media Development Authority. And it can be broader than just broadcasting, you can give money to film development or other things, and there's no reason why Bhutan, if it chose, shouldn't look into this thoroughly and see if it couldn't help all its broadcasters with extra funds for special PSB program. Now, my final uh, sort of point for action is to support the growth of a small but high quality independent sector. Now you've got one already, um, and, uh, but I'm sure it's uh, struggling for um, money. And uh, one way to help them could be to require all the broadcasters here to commission, say, a certain percentage of their output from the independent sector. Could be a very small percentage to begin with, 1%, 2%, whatever. But the only way that um, big national broadcasters like BBS will actually put their stuff out to independent contract is I'm afraid if they push it into it. That's my experience with the BBC. They want to do, they wanted to do everything themselves, then they were required by the government to give a certain proportion of their work to the independent sector. And there was lots of grumbling they did. And in fact it's increased the diversity and the range of kind of the range of programming and it's had all sorts of good effects in Britain that now we have a really quite a strong independent sector. So with ambitions of this kind, I think Bhutan in the years ahead could achieve, I think, the highest quality broadcasting in this region, and even, if you take into account its size, in the world. And so just as you've preserved your distinctive architecture, I see it's lovely to see new buildings going up with all the old features and so on. I think it's absolutely wonderful. You've got your preservation of your architecture, you've got a preservation of your very elegant national dress, you've protected your country from the ravages of mass tourism. So I think you can also protect and support your broadcasting so that it's special and it relates to your cultural values and it doesn't come, become degraded as it has been in other countries. So I admire your achievements and I look forward to even more in the years ahead. <laughs>